bowling lanes. And um, that started in 1957 and went right straight through to 1970. I lost my voice talking to all the old tiger cats, so I ran. <laughs> we'd run in here, we'd see the tiger cats playing, we'd run outside here and we'd actually find them. <laughs> Pete Newman and Bob Krause and Russ Jackson and uh, uh, Angelo Mosca, saw him out there. And it was terrific. It was, and Willie Bethia, too, actually was here um, as well. And that was terrific to see him. So um, I have a little speech, and I, I knew I'd be too nervous to actually um, make this up and work along, so I actually wrote it out. So I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> so pardon me while I read this. This is coming to you from, uh, as a fan. Uh, hard to believe, but... Uh, 58 years ago, as a seven-year-old fan of John Barrow and the Hamilton Tiger Cats, I never could have imagined the day would come that I'd be standing in the CFL Hall of Fame uh, delivering a eulogy to my sports hero, John Barrow. I'm really honored to be able to do this. As you know, 58 years ago, John left Florida as the captain of the All-American uh, football team, uh, trying for a position with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. John was drafted by the Detroit Lions but Jim Trimble convinced John that having a second income while playing football in Canada was possible in the CFL, but not the NFL. So consequently, John came to uh, the, uh, the CFL. That's how he arrived in Canada. And soon thereafter became a partner with my father and my mother, Lois, who's here, and Jerry McDougall, by the way, and they're looking for uh, Jerry McDougall now to give him a ring. Chris Durka is on the lookout for Jerry McDougall, so if anybody knows where he is, please let Chris Durka know. And the Sportsman Center Bowling Lanes in Hamilton, which uh, was a terrific bowling center for a long time. I was seven years old in 1957, and the first, uh, the first year of 14 seasons that John played with the Tiger Cats, ending in 1970. As you can imagine, as a youngster, I was overwhelmed having the opportunity of actually knowing my sports hero, watching John play for the next 14 seasons, right into my young adulthood in 1970. During this time, I watched John carefully, noticing all the attributes of leadership, dependability, dedication, and love of the game, and his team, teammates, that made John such a great player. His personal success was immense, winning every award possible. Perennial All-Star, Captain of the Team, four Grey Cups, Wall of Fame, Hall of Fame in induction, and Lineman of the Century culminating as the general manager of the Argonauts. There was nothing that John did not accomplish, absolutely nothing. Forty-five years has passed. These are big numbers, aren't they? Forty-five years has passed since John retired from football. John and Vanjie moved back to the United States, and we lost track of each other until very recently. One afternoon, after a couple of martinis, I started to reminisce about the Tiger Cat era, uh, uh, the era of my life, and especially about John, I thought about his influence on my life and how, as a full aging adult, many years later, I still regard John as a fan on a, and, a personal, and on a personal level as well. I broke it down into three words fan, metaphor, and icon. As a fan, short for fanatic, and I certainly uh, was that. I took vicarious pleasure in sharing in the success of the Tiger Cats from 1957 to 1970, and especially in all the awards John earned. As a metaphor, John stood for strength, determination, reliability, and success. As an icon, all you need is a picture of the wall on the wall of John with his knee down, waiting to ruin the next offensive play from his tackle position. I was talking to someone actually, um, Russ Jackson, I think it was, outside. And I said to uh, Russ Jackson that only two players that I know of changed the direction of play in football. And one was John Barrow, and the other was Lawrence Taylor of the New York Giants, where the offense would run to the right side of the line because he was on the left side. And that allowed the defense to play better because you could play strong side on, on the other side. And that was really a critical part, as a side note, that I just noticed here today. Last year, I decided to find John's phone number. 
and I started searching through the yellow pages, the white pages, every place I could find, and who would have guessed Missouri City is actually in Texas? <laughs> you never would have guessed that. So I tried to reconnect, if possible, to bring it all full circle as we both are getting older and it seemed a little more urgent than it has been in the past few years. Vanji answered the phone and informed me that John was in pain, in and out of the hospital and not always at home, but he would try to call me back in a few hours. I waited until the phone rang and instantly I was returned to my childhood as John and I talked about the quote, good times, that's what he referred to them as. As John recalled with remarkable accuracy the glory years, I was amazed at his humility and mostly his respect for his teammates, constantly shifting the attention away from himself to the team. With all his accomplishments, I took this away with me and we concluded a wonderful three and a half hour conversation. Soon after, I received a team picture with a handwritten note from John thanking me for the call. I was suddenly seven years old with 64 years experience. I am truly grateful to have had the chance to speak with John that day and complete the circle of life from a small, impressionable boy to an adult who fully appreciates what it takes to become a true icon. Thank you. Thank you.